I guess, I don't know, when I was a kid, you know, there was uh, a lot of signatures around town and, um, you know, I started to look at tags, I guess, years even before I actually started to write because, you know, just being a kid in New York, you kind of look at tags and, you know, I started to put uh, two and two together and I realized that some of the names that I saw in certain places of the city were the same names in other places of the city. So I was kind of fascinated by the fact that the same name was in different places. And I also used to have a cousin that used to write and he used to write Sky 3. And uh, even when I was really little and I didn't understand even what the concept of it was, I used to see him write his name in the street and even though I didn't really understand it, I kind of felt the, the, the level of danger and the energy that went along with doing that because I kind of knew that he wasn't supposed to do it, but he was doing it anyway. I uh, used to write with another guy called uh, Delta Two, and uh, he was uh, kind of the, the person who helped me out a lot in the beginning, and you know he would help me out with outlines, and then I would try and paint them and some of the, you know for a couple of years he actually did the, the the outlines and then I would fill them in and you know that's kind of how I learned just being an apprentice to him and uh, Zephyr and you know looking at other people's stuff and you know eventually kind of you know develop my own style and was able to kind of um, start to you know develop my own identity as an artist. If you were a writer in the early 80s and you didn't paint trains, you were considered a toy, you know. There was no place for people who, in terms of, you know, respect or there was no place for you in the movement if you did not paint trains. For the most part, you were, you know, inconsequential, nobody paid any attention to you. You know, you had to be uh, in the system taking risks and getting out there and painting your name. If anything, you know, the whole the movement was totally focused around the, the trains. Pretty much universally from its inception, people have been very, extremely intolerant of signatures, you know. It's kind of like an invasion of privacy, I, I, I assume. Millions of people ride the subway and a couple of hundred people want to decide what it's supposed to look like. I guess it's the same for the streets in the city. Um, you know, I think that there's, there's always been a group of people who have been, you know, advocates of the movement and who have supported it and who appreciate it. But um, I think, you know, universally, like, signatures just are, you know, not really, people aren't that mad about it. When people see imagery uh, in terms of pieces or whatever that they find inspiring or that they can relate to it, you know, they like it. You know, if you look around and you see, like, the kind of memorial walls that different artists do, um, lots of people are fascinated by it, and they support it, and they're interested in it. But, you know, people just don't really like tags, so I don't know if that's going to change. The other thing is, you know, the fact that, you know, this is, for all intents and purposes, something which is illegal. So at the particular point in time that some people do get apprehended or arrested, you know, they, they, they tend to not want to continue to do it. So the, the only people who really, um, you know, started, uh, you know, 20 years ago and are still doing it are like, you know, the few people who are really so passionate about it uh, that, you know, in spite of all the obstacles, they continue to do it no matter what anybody said to them. They arrested a significant amount of people. That was one thing. So I think, I, I don't remember the year that it really ended specifically, but I remember, if I'm not mistaken, the statistics were up like uh, like one year they arrested six people the entire year and then the year after that they arrested about 73 people um, so the policing uh, changed I think that uh, the fact that the security changed uh, a lot of people got older people didn't want to take the risks the laws changed um, they started cleaning all the trains immediately once they were painted so you didn't see the trains in circulation that did get painted so it was kind of discouraging to the people who did paint them and it was a bit defeatist because if you don't really ever see it then in, in effect there's almost no point in doing it because if you're just doing it to get the picture to fill up your photo book it kind of defeats the purpose of what I was saying before about actually being able to see your name 
uh, go by. So I think a combination of all that and that was the, kind of the beginning of the end. Whereas, you know, today, you know, you got magazines, uh, articles, uh, this, that, you know, there's such a high level of awareness and there's so much knowledge and, and uh, about the whole thing that, you know, a person could start tagging and then be able to, you know, do intricate uh, pieces in a much shorter time frame because he has a lot more visual information to, to inspire him and to help him. And you guys got, uh, you know, stores that sell caps and, you know, a, a gazillion different colors of spray paint because there's all these different spray paint companies. I mean, the list is endless. There's just a lot more uh, abilities for a creative person to get information and to evolve. You know, there are certain inalienable aspects of this movement which makes it really different from other kinds of movements. I mean, you know, this is, uh, you know, one of the few if any art movements which is you know pretty much for all intents and purposes illegal to do so I think that's a kind of bond which exists uh, you know between us uh, the part you know in part and just you know the fact that it's kind of like not totally universally accepted so it kind of keeps everybody kind of you know huddled together 